Crank it, Glenn! Rick Ross! Woo! What's up, sports fans? It's too much dip. It's Tuesday. I'm Dave. I'm going to host. Apologies for the wait. Dylan and I and some of the some of the other fellows in this company had to do a little media day. Just part of it, man. Had to go out, go low, go high. Not going to name names. We're going to do a podcast today, though. And boy, is it going to be a good one in studio. It's Dylan Shivery. Fun day yesterday on the golf course, Davey. Um, didn't play well. Didn't keep your score. You got mad at me over that. Swag bag was the best it's ever been, though. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I wasn't going to speak on that publicly, but it was quite the generous swag bag. So these things, they always give us swag bags. and uh, Swag. It's, they do like a hat and like a little Yeti Rambler situation with their logo on it and all that. And those some Kendra Scott kind of like jewel, but it's not like nice, just some jewelry, but not like the good stuff, which is great. But this one blew it out of the water, man. I don't know why I'm bragging so much, but I'm excited to be. So not only did we make y'all wait for the podcast, but um, we're going to just scoreboard y'all by talking about our swag. And also KJ, we made him wait to do the podcast and he got no swag. He did, yeah, he didn't. He wasn't out there. They call him KJ No Swag. It would all be fitting as a former molded cleat in a Nike Sharks wearing uh, individual cloth sleeves under my uniform. I've been swagless for quite some time. Well, um, it's good to know that you were a, a Yeti rambling man uh, because I think that feeds right into something I wanted to discuss with you fellas, uh, fellers, if you will, right off the top. I don't know how much you guys pay attention to things like, I don't know, the economy. And all of that, the United States labor force, um, you know, we're not the country we once were. A lot of this work from home inefficiencies, people aren't really generating um, what we could as a nation. And I think I've solved the issue. After many weekends at places such as children's museums, grocery stores, Costco, parks, you name it, there is... <coughs> a big problem with one-handed women. And I don't mean to single them out, but if we could really get our arms around the fact that maybe we'd be able to help one another out, maybe produce more as a country if we weren't all carrying our Stanley cups in one hand or a coffee mug in one hand whilst trying to push a stroller or a grocery oh. cart or hold a child. Okay. Because, you know, Sometimes it's a so little difficult you as are a partner is, to, uh, to uh, do try, everything with just two hands. Trying to catch up here. You are attributing <laughs> the economic uh, downturn, if you will, in our country to women using one hand as opposed to two because they are carrying uh, water bottles, jugs, jugs. ramblers um, <laughs> around. <laughs> Big old jug of distilled water. That's, they're going to go home and use their neti pot. That's what's it's going not, on. It's not that they have them. I too, you know, as, as a good beverage man, have you know my sparkling water of choice here at the ready. Well, I respect you back. for having mm -hmm. multiple bevies, you know, within arm's reach. But you are not walking around a store, uh, getting out of your car, making sure that one hand is always locked in, holding that mug. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not going to co-sign that bill, but um, I am listening. <laughs> yeah, look, look, this is a place of free expression, so, you know, we're not going to de-platform you. I, I hey. took me a minute to understand what you're talking about, because you said one-handed women, and I was like, I was like is that a... Is that, that, a that Stanley uh, Cup that you're referring to, very popular right now. My, my wife... Um, she doesn't leave the house with it, but when she is at home, it's by her side at all times. She loves that thing. Explain this to me. It's it's just a it's like it's like a rambler, but it's big. It has a handle on it and a lid with a, a big plastic straw coming out of it. And it, it is a Smaller. very high quality item. Yeah. 
but it seems smaller to be, base to fit in the cup holders is also like another key feature, just like his, you know, cup there. But like, I think that's the other thing they brag about that it can fit in the car. Seems to be more popular with the fairer sex. Dylan's uh, double yetied up. I just want to point that out. Yeah, I have a, <laughs> a medium sized one, and then of course my my small John right here, the little John. I call him little John. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's what the people tuned it's, in for. Uh, it's a ten ounce. Okay, perfectly uh, sized for a cup of Bing Bong, which is what's in here right now. I am drinking an afternoon Bing Bong. Very cool. KJ, what's been going but on in your, in your uh, world other than your observations? Well, you know, keep an eye out. You'll see that this is an issue worldwide. That's really the height of it um, for me. I, I will say that uh, as we well know in that studio and with the angle of our cameras, the uh, smaller mug that Dylan has looks like it could be an es espresso cup while the other one looks like a big gulp. So I see how this happens now. Uh, but anyways, let's dive in. Let's do some of those sports. How about that? There's a lot of sports to be had. And I don't know where you guys want to begin. If you want to do a little combine talk. Let's do a little combine yeah. talk. I'm ready to talk Bijan. Uh, okay, go, go ahead and give me uh, your 10 winners and 10 losers of the combine, Dylan. Go <laughs> okay, ahead. Okay, I've actually prepared a list. I'm, I'm glad Hells you brought this yeah. up. Hells uh, no, I do. Would, I would like to start with Bijan, if that's okay. If you, got, if you all would <clears throat> indulge me. It's uh, the only way we'd have it. He was the talk of, of Sunday. Sunday was the offensive linemen and running backs. And Bijan, in my opinion, he's he's had every tool except for like the breakaway speed element to his game. He ran a four four. I think the official time was a four four six, which is much faster than I thought he was mm. going to run. I put him at mid four five. Interesting, because people were wondering if he was going to be sub five two. Um, no, that was you actually. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, <clears throat> and so, I have been watching very closely and picking up some things, some tips. Yeah, he ran a four four six, maybe a four four seven. I'm not sure. Anyway. Plenty fast. Uh, he, he's going to go. He, he, I think he cemented first round, first round status. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, well, riddle me this, hot shot. Mm -hmm. In a world where the position, the running back position, has been uh, somewhat devalued um, over the last few years in the modern game, do you think it would be wise to take um, Bijan, who I think we could agree is the best running back in the draft? Well, for argument's sake, we'll we'll assume he's top of the board for most people. Do you take him with the first? Say you got a top ten pick. No, no. If you're the Cowboys or a team in the twenties, and he's he's there. I have um, long held this had the stance that you don't you don't draft a running back in the first round. I, I people know that just, about you. You just don't. Um, <laughs> certainly not in the top ten. If you are if you are a Philadelphia Eagles, however, um, which is a team that. Where do they pick? The hated Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, don't they have two picks? They, they got two first. That's a team <laughs> where it, they can probably afford to, um, you know, take a risk on a, a you know a, a tier one running back because that's kind of what they're missing. No offense to Miles Sanders, who's a fine running back, but that's obviously a very explosive offense. Uh, their defense is uh, stacked. I'm not sure what they're losing this off season, but that's a team that's pretty well set. A running back like Bijan, especially if you have two first round picks, makes a lot of sense. So um, I do think he goes in the first round, not necessarily to the Eagles, but a team kind of like what I'm describing that just can can afford to take a chance on a guy like him. Um, KJ, sorry, I was just reading Slack. Randy had a funny comment to me. Um, what, you've been tasked with uh, monitoring the combine to see if any dong pops out. Has there been any dickage? Because I do <laughs> believe that's something you brought up last week. Um, when reviewing the Zapruder film, um, I tried to make that sound like Zipper. It didn't really fit. Just kind of sound, sound like Zapruder. That's good. Um, when reviewing all of the footage, or dickage, if you will. There was actually one incident where there was more than just a little readjustment on back-to-back -back athletes. I believe it came uh, really tight end. Yeah, uh. tight end or receiver uh, day. Receivers finishing up his 40 and immediately pulling the whole, you know, you're getting out of, uh, you're getting out of the pool. 
and you know you've got to do some readjustment. It was like a grab, shift, readjust situation multiple times before he made the turn to like go back and get in line again. I think uh, if I'm like, I wonder if there's an angle out there of a flop. Hmm. Um, what I'm wondering is in that scenario you just painted, uh, getting out of the pool and there's like an audience, you know, you're, you got your swim trunks and they're just kind of stuck to you. Is there any way to take care of that before you get out? Because when you stand up, it's a spectacle. And you know, you do that little pop, everybody knows what you're doing. You got you gotta yeah, it's tough, man. Uh tough situation. You gotta find a way to pull down discreetly. Yeah. Like you do the lift. There are ways to do it. I don't need to get into all that, you know. This is especially <laughs> tough for you because you wear white bathing suits. With no liner. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. No liner at all. Mm -hmm. Well, it used to be. People can change. Fair. Uh <laughs> you've got to also add in the factor of while you're getting out of the pool. If you try to readjust at the wrong time, that bathing suit catches air and you get, you know, you get bubble shorts. Suit bubble coming out the coming out the mm. pool. I have a pair of workout shorts. I won't name names. It's actually they've never been a sponsor, but they've got the liner. And when and when I was like a fancying myself to a swimmer when I was doing laps, uh, they would always inflate and I couldn't get rid of the bubble. And it, I found it much easier because it acted as a flotation device. Um, so my, my, my PRs were, were really, were really good and high as I'm going down and back and then just winded for the next 45 seconds. It's very hard swimming. So what we can do here, we can keep talking like penises and, and trunks and stuff. Or we can just go back to the combine if you want. Just, uh, can it sounds we like talk a real about Georgia. <laughs> choose your own adventure. Yeah, let's break. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think the big winner was probably Anthony Richardson, the quarterback from Florida, who just put on an absolute show. <laughs> okay. It's a low energy <laughs> calm. No, but that guy is a freak of an athlete, man. Am Can I we cut that for our promo? <laughs> just uh, that one line? Because that was really, very sports sports uh, media right there. Yeah, yeah. they really good. Was the part about the penises in the, in the trunks or what you, which one? No, no, no. <laughs> one right you, after you, that. You uh, having morphine hit your system right as you're making a point about it. <laughs> no, this guy is so really good. No, I, am I crazy for being really, really high on this dude? I know some people are, but – and I think the comp – I've seen the comp of Josh Allen – um, especially like when Josh Allen was coming out because but, he was not known as an accurate thrower, but like a freak athlete. I, I, I don't, I, I don't get excited for this because of the position that he plays. I mean, at the end of the day, okay, the quarterback position is the most difficult position to play. In it's kind of an important one, though. No, what, what is <laughs> the QB position? No, yeah, of course, that's, that's not what I'm saying. It is, it's the most important position on the field. It's also the most difficult position to play in sports. So much of how good you are as a quarterback has nothing to do with like you're just raw athleticism. Sure, there's you gave an example, Josh Allen. Yes, he's a big dude with a strong arm, but um, no one like his forty, his forty inch or his forty or his vert don't really define him as a quarterback. Like this guy is a, a hell of an athlete. Can you imagine obviously. if he threw a jump pass? <laughs> The jump pass is coming back, Don. It's not. I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, trust like he's me. a quarterback. I mean, how does he? You know, how, how does he respond to like a collapsing pocket? You know, that's what I want to know. How would any of us respond to such a thing? KJ, <laughs> I'm trying to talk um, ball here. I know. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm really shooting your wheels off. I missed his live run, like his run live. I should say, but. They do a pretty cool thing when you watch the draft. Uh, you see it sometimes in baseball where they do the overlay of a pitcher's, like, different pitches coming at me, a pitcher's, whatever, the ball coming out of his hand. Mm -hmm. You see it with uh, you. Darvish has a pretty cool overlay, you. like his seven pitches. Hit it, um, hit it, hit it. But they'll do the uh, – I cannot respect that or endorse it. Come on. <laughs> they'll do the 40-yard the <laughs> dash overlays. Up? No. They'll do the 40 yard dash overlays and it's kind of comical how like much of a stretch that they're trying to do. Like maybe it's because Jalen hurts didn't run. Um, but I'm pretty sure Lamar did, but there's a lot of effort not to like make direct comps to people of similar demographics. What do you mean? Like other Florida quarterbacks? They tried to say other Florida quarterbacks and loop Cam Newton in there. And I'm like, whoa. 
Okay. Whoa. Nobody remembers him he as a Florida semester. quarterback. You might as well say Blinn quarterback. So they were looking for a double factor authentication. So they, they threw in like, like, all right, how do we how do we comp him to Cam? But like, it's not like because we're doing it because of that. Oh, there's the Florida Connect. Yes, people we're for, in. People forget he stole that laptop and then threw it out of his door and window. <laughs> I love that move. Yeah. Just to act of, of aggression towards authority. Uh-oh. Oh, KJ. KJ man. just dipped to the he had enough of us. Yeah. He told us he had a hard out. Look at us just powering through. I don't know. I like him. I like him. I know you I know you I don't dislike him. You don't dislike him. He was a Heisman he was, he was a Heisman candidate for about a week and a half. He put up pretty poor numbers. Yeah, he looked as a quarterback. He balled against Utah like game one. Everybody's like, oh. He's oh. He, he has obviously freakish athletic ability, but didn't put up good numbers in the, that I don't, I don't know. I mean, he he might – look, I think he's a, a project quarterback who has a lot of upside. Um, but I, I wouldn't bank on him being like an absolute game changer in the NFL at this point. He could get there. He has potential. Okay. He's got the tools to be great. Does it make him a great quarterback, though? Yeah. Sometimes they give you the tools to be your own boss. Um. Yeah. I Okay. Like Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I don't know. I don't know how that applies to what we're talking well, about. Well, you you gave me a little bit of an opening there, and I took it. Okay, I'm basically killing time for That's KJ. Cool. Um, man, we've got a lot of bad behavior we could talk about. Why don't we just knock out uh, an ad read? Ooh, that and then sounds we'll get KJ bad. back in, and we'll talk about this bad behavior. <sighs> I start every morning with Athletic Greens, Oof. specifically, Dylan. You think I don't? The AG one. You think I know I don't? you do. No, I know you do. Okay. It's it's particularly important right now. We've got a brand new camera that's really, really uh putting us in HD. I gotta look well rested. I gotta look good and healthy. That's why every morning, pop open my AG1, pour it in the little shaker, six, eight ounces of water, shake it up, drink it. First thing I do every morning. How that's about you? That's exactly how I start my day, too. Best way to start your day. Uh you feel you just kind of feel your body come to life a little bit. Like it's like, oh shit. That AG1 hit, you know, and it's like you ready to, you're just ready to do your thing. Did you just Harlem shake? Is that what it makes I, you do? I don't know. If, maybe. <laughs> so what is this stuff? That's probably what you're asking. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, aging, all of the things. Uh, and the best part is you don't have to take a bunch of pills. That's kind of a beating. I don't like taking like five different vitamins to get what I need. I can just do my AG1 and I'm good. It's lifestyle friendly, whether we eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. And it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient Daily nutrition, it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash bang. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash bang to take ownership over your health and pick up the da ultimate daily nutritional insurance kj's back welcome back <clears throat> thank you fellas professionals both of you um we handled that better than expected where do we want to start with uh just all around bad behavior since we were talking a little bit college football do we want to start with georgia yeah football and then yeah. kind of segue from there i think so um i'd honestly forgot that stetson bennett got a, a pi in Dallas, in Uptown Dallas, right? <laughs> Which is just like, okay, it may Close not have been step. Uptown, but in my mind, I'm going to pretend it was in Uptown because that is the most <laughs> Stetson Bennett thing possible. He's not from that area, is he? New. No. Okay. Why was no. he in Dallas? Likely just training there, I, I okay. assume. He's probably just going to fight out. Seeing what those <laughs> here, they got some good guys. I want to check them out. You know Randy's fret. Yeah, Randy's, <laughs> made, Randy's made that pretty clear. 
Randy's so fratty, he has to take a day off after <laughs> no a staycation. You no, know, he takes a day off after a full day of work. To rec- he has like a it's three day recovery. That's true. Randy's our producer. Pretty, he's, he's pretty he's sure we delayed time. recording by about twelve seconds to make sure Randy had his glasses. Super frat. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, the Jalen Carter arrest. This is a bad one. <sighs> Two misdemeanors. Yeah. Um, turns out he was at the scene of the uh, tragic crash, potentially driving reckless. That's what he's being accused of, a little reckless driving, things like that. Um, he did leave the scene. I'm not if I'm not mistaken if uh, the theory that I've read is correct. Um, but yeah, yeah. He, he was racing the car that against the car that crashed, killing two people, uh, one of which was a staff member. The other one was another player. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, he, accident happens or whatever and Jalen carter flees the scene comes back later and then he apparently lied to police about being at the scene of the crash when it happened um yeah i feel like i mean this was a huge story last week this week i haven't been following combine that closely i don't know is this going to be enough to like He's the best player in the draft, right? Uh, he he's definitely up there. He's he's worthy of a number one overall pick. He's a, a game wrecker. Um, this if this affects his draft status or his you know draft position, not mm-hmm. by much. Not like say like twenty four, twenty five picks. Um, what what pick does Dallas have again? Yeah, twenty six. Okay, no, just oh. for sake of I, argument. I don't think so. I don't think so because I mean, he these are he, like what like Class B misdemeanors. I think they were or something along <clears throat> those lines, which is obviously not not nothing. But when you're talking about a guy that could be you know anchor your defensive line for the next ten years, it's like okay, I know probably worth taking a chance on. We single out Jerry because he's the GM of the team that Dylan and I like, but. There's, uh, I think most GMs would not pass on uh, that opportunity. This would not you, stop Jerry Jones. You don't see too many moral stances. There was the uh, Lyle Collins situation. Uh, Dallas drafted Lyle Collins from LSU. Um, he was. They, what they was the in, story there? He was he was interviewed about a murder. Right. He was never a person of interest. He was never a suspect. But because he was connected it's, to the murder it's it's actually bullshit it is bullshit like, he felt it cost him money yeah it felt he felt big time in the in the draft and then of course of you have the laramie tunsil laramie which is tunsil. A, the, <laughs> the weed gas mask i know that's not that's a different realm not quite as serious, Early not serious at all days. yeah that one is bizarre that one was so weird because first of all that's so it's so cliche college to have a weed gas mask. Nobody's doing that after college. Second of all, it happened like 30 minutes before the draft. I feel like that that photo dropped. It was like right before. It was, it was a video. It was a video. video. Yeah. I, I, I think it happened like way before it actually was like released. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like for someone sure. was holding on to it just to fuck with them like right before the draft is what it seemed like. Yeah. I'm glad both of those cases, those guys have gotten their money. Also, did he ever take the mask off? Because he could, I mean, plausible deniability. Like, you can't prove that's me. Just a, just a big dude in a gas mask. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the shaggy defense worked the week of the draft, uh, especially when it had, like, his his Snapchat name, like, in the top left corner. <laughs> oh, was it a Snapchat? I, I think it was something where it was, like, tagged with this handle. And, of course, it wasn't, like, you know unknown lineman 98 it was probably like larry.m.tunsil44 or something <laughs> oh, <laughs> should have okay. gone with unknown lineman 98 I'm, I'm looking <laughs> i'm looking at it again and he does pull his mask off so it is it is just ah. straight up hell. yeah uh i think the only other one i can think of week of or shortly before the draft would be also lsu uh associated um honey badger the um uh, although that I don't think it was week of the draft. Was that not like off season where he had a backpack full of weed and a gun? Oh, is that what it was? I don't remember. The, yeah, uh, I do remember. I remember something. Um, the Ramont's Taylor special. I can't. Oh, there's an A. Uh, I can't think of Honey Badger now without thinking about that clutch pizza at 1 a.m. that that guy ordered for Elon who dubbed himself the Honey Badger. 
It's true. I can't. That's just how my mind works. Um, fortunately, I remember him for some positive things. He did like a uh, uh, promo with P- not PETA with uh, ASPCA or something like that, like warning people in the Arizona area like about the dangers of leaving your dogs in the car in the summer. And he sat in like a locked car that wasn't on, and within like six minutes was just drenched in sweat and dehydrated. I was like, damn, that seems difficult. And you know, don't don't lock your car, dogs in the car. Whatever. Did he really do that? Yeah, it was, it was oh. a wild video. Stuck Shout with me. Shout out to him. Shout um, out to his okay. Big ups. They're they're more relevant, I guess. Recent issues. Um, do we want to go to Ja or do we want to stick with college? Ooh, let's let's knock out what someone has dubbed woke Texas Tech. Uh, <laughs> That's a KJ John. I, I wasn't gonna name names. <laughs> I'll let KJ take it from here. Is KJ, you have to answer for your old your alma mater. Oh uh, yeah. Woke Texas um, Tech. On what planet are we going around firing our coaches for <laughs> spitting on players and using foul language? Um I was kind of surprised uh based on all of the well, how would you phrase it? Really like high hatting that all of Texas tech Twitter had during the Chris beard age, like Chris beard drama that when Mark Adams is suspended, possibly eventually fired. Uh, my timeline was very quiet and it wasn't just cause Elon was fucking things up. <laughs> yeah. My timeline was very quiet too, which is weird. Uh, I follow a lot of Texas tech fans <laughs> somehow that accidentally followed a bunch of them. Uh, had a lot to say about Chris Beard. I know this is a different situation, but um, yeah, their coach is not looking so hot right now. And they just, they're pretty quiet about it. It's weird. I don't know. David, do you have the like <laughs> highlights of what actually occurred? Cause I, I do believe there was an incident where yes. he's alleged to have spit on a player. The other one where there's racially insensitive language. He, I didn't read into the full context. Okay. The, the, the one that I believe has got him was the um, comment he made to a player um, that where he uh, his claim is that he was quoting a Bible verse when he told one of his players, presumably a black player, um, that there's always a master and a servant. And he says he was quoting scripture. I am not going to sit here and uh, hold myself out to be an, an expert on the Bible. I'm not. The good book, heck. Love it. It's a good book. What's your favorite version, though? New or old? I like them both. There's a lot of good in both. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just don't know. I, and I'm assuming he was he was trying to like make this kid more coachable. Like you have to understand authority. And I just feel like this wasn't the move. I don't know anything. Out, well, I do, <laughs> I know some rumors about this gentleman. I don't know if he is a, a bad guy or not. I don't know if he realized what he was saying and if he meant it bad. But uh, that on top of there is a borderline player revolt early in the season. Uh, one of their best players, I can't remember his name, was it was you know supposed to hop in the transfer portal. He ended up staying, I believe. Um, apologies to my tech fan, tech friends and family if I'm getting any of this wrong. And then there's the uh, incident KJ alluded to, the spitting incident that happened earlier in the season where I believe he spit either purposely or accidentally and said, I can spit on whoever I want, which you just don't want to do that. Spitting is uh, particularly disrespectful. So what we have here is a uh, totality of the circumstances. And There is one more thing. There is one more thing. Tech has been – oh, you're talking about that thing? Yeah, That's speculation. Which, which isn't exactly uh, well, co- uh, coaching related. Um, well, but yeah, is this, oh. I guess this is, is this speculation? Can we, we can share this surely. Yeah. Um, Mark Adams, uh, late brother, twin brother, twin brother. He, he passed away, uh, which is sad, unfortunate. Indeed. Um, Mark Adams then left his wife for his late brother's, uh, widow, which is, uh, some might call that questionable decision-making. I don't know. I'm not one of those people. A uh, real Hunter Biden situation. Yeah. He, he also looks like a turtle. That's Mark, right. Mark Adams. He does. He's very turtle He's very turtle like. He's, <laughs> <very turtle-like. laughs> He's very turtle like. That's facts. Um, and then one other thing important to note 
Tech is not Tech has been really bad this year. I was gonna say if he gets fired, it's probably because he's just a shitty basketball coach, and this is like <laughs> this is just more reason to I let him go for well, like. Yes, and, and importantly, for cause. firing him for cause yes. and not having to pay him his buyout. Yeah. So that's probably what's happening here. You're tech seeing fans, what they call a classic pretext. I believe tech fans want him to be shown the door. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, hey, I, know I would coach, imagine so. I don't know the sentiment. I know a coach who's available for them. Oh, uh, can I guess? Yeah. Bobby Knight. No. Fuck. Uh, also has a, Billy Tubbs. He has made some questionable decisions too, but he's also, but he's a hell of a coach. And he knows where Lubbock is. Oh, ooh, that could be. Oh, I know. Uh, uh, Tommy Tuberville. No, Chris Beard. <laughs> Shit. Chris Beard. I just don't know. I feel like it's toxic. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what if they hired Chris Beard back? No, they're not going to, but it'd be funny. I endorse it. <laughs> oh, okay. His, KJ's uh, a booster. His info's already in the system. Uh, yeah, his info's in the system from an HR standpoint. It'd be a lot easier. He doesn't have to fill out a W-9 uh, or whatever. <laughs> they already exactly. have it on record. <laughs> Might have to update that criminal background check. Who knows? Oh, geez. Um, yeah, so I don't know that there's much more to say there until the other shoe drops, per se. It is hilarious seeing uh, Chris Beard's name floated, not for that specifically, but like other places, and people getting on their high horses about it. And I'm like, Ole Miss. Ole Miss specifically. I'm like, uh, Ole Miss, since when are you the, uh, you know, beaming light of decorum in hiring coaches? Like, let's just uh, take what you can get. But speaking of SEC basketball, I think that's a good segue. Alabama, it's worth noting, like, how good they've been all year on the court. I believe top five right now in the AP ratings, likely going to be a one or two seed as uh, we are in uh, conference tournament week. Um, freshman of the year, you know, AP yeah, SEC of the player year. of the year. Uh, in a widely publicized story, um, which I no longer have open. So if you want to hit the high points since my uh, departure, I realize it closed. Um, they had a situation where two players – we're involved in an incident where uh, a third individual who's not a member of the team um, and female, um, the third individual shot and killed a female um, who's obviously not on the men's basketball team. Issue at hand being their star player, insert name here, Les Brandon Miller. Miller. Brandon Miller. Um, was contacted by the other player the night of the event and Brandon Miller was not with the other three individuals. Um, uh, he decided not to go into the club. There was a line. He didn't want to wait. We've all been there. Probably didn't want to deal with like getting his ID checked as a freshman. Maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. A little but surprised that those guys would have to wait in line at a club right next to campus. Cause they are like, yeah. anyway, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. KJ. Maybe, maybe it's a part of it, but, um, Miller decided not to go into the event. Uh, the other teammate did. I'm butchering some of the details here, but I, I want to make sure I highlight the point that he was requested to bring the gun that was used in the murder via text. It was known after the arrest when all of this came to light. Um, uh, the other player on the team, if you have the story, can you give me the other name? Yeah. Um, sorry, the names are, there's a lot going on. But, and they're all very similar names. That's why I'm I'm completely have lost it here. Yeah, yeah, it's Dar uh, Darius Miles, Miles, Miles and Miller. Okay, that's why. So Miles was present uh, at the time of the shooting. He was the one who provided the gun. It was Miller's gun, or actually, I guess it was Miles' gun. Miller retrieved it for him, but the third individual is the one who's you know alleged to have pulled the trigger. Um, Miles is being charged with capital murder, as is the third individual. Um, Alabama sheriffs or the sheriffs in the area basically interviewed Miller, who is still playing, still active, an active member of the roster. The University of Alabama has no investigation to Miller because it is their role to follow the direction of the local police department. Ooh, they, I've heard that before. Uh, Sounds very familiar. Exactly. It very is a very, very similar situation to a lot of the feedback you heard in Waco where um, 
Art Bryles and everything that went on there, their fallback was always, we're following Waco PD, who's never bungled any investigations ever. Um, not technically Waco, not technically Waco. Uh, unless we're talking, sense. unless we're talking Zero biker, arrest. <laughs> biker shooting. <laughs> yeah. Biker oh, shooting. Okay. Being my, my number one. Yeah. Right. Um, but anyways, here in Alabama, the sheriffs investigated Miller. No charges have named him not as a person of interest, that there's nothing that he is alleged to have done that he could be charged for. They don't expect any charges to be coming, not currently under investigation. So by those rules, he has done nothing that the university can suspend, discipline him, or otherwise like do anything to him for, aside from being privy to all of this. Now, the school claims that they, or at least the coach claims that he was not fully aware of the text message request that I need you to get my, I need my joint was the the phrasing. Now who knows if Miller was aware or knew that this was going to happen or whatever, but that was the little bit of gray area at the end of the day, someone's dead. Uh, you got a player who's deserving of a lot of awards on the court and a lot of weird stuff around it. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, further, uh, in the news because uh, last weekend, uh, weekend before last, uh, his pregame after he's announced, he's been doing this all season where uh, another player, uh, presumably like I, I didn't recognize the kid, bench player, pats him down. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the bit. And uh, they ran that play back. And it, I don't think it was a, it wasn't the best look, but um, you know, there's more important issues here in this story, um, but yeah, he's he's since labeled it a TSA pat down. Is what he was uh, going after. There. Yeah, I hate that. Mm. They had, yeah, because he takes flight when he plays. Oh, that's a oh my god, that's really good. Is that really what he said? That's, that, that was the explanation that I've oh, read. That's really good spin. Except what he should have done is is done, done his hands over his head like he was going through the the radiation blast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should also point out that. Head uh, coach Nate Oates, who was one of the hotter names in college basketball. Yeah, he's hot. Um, said that Miller was at the wrong place at the wrong time. So his first kind response, of just yeah. completely dismissing Miller's, uh, you know, responsibility and all this, which is obviously a bad look. He later apologized for it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously not missing a single game, no suspension, and then his coach – it, it – it, it's it's like it doesn't matter almost. It's what it seems like. Of course, the other player um, has been suspended because he's been charged, but Miller, nothing yet. Yeah, no longer associated with the university. Right. Um, yeah. On the flip side, over in New Mexico State, where like a lot of the reason that Alabama still has their coach, you know, Miles or Miller still playing, they're like I said, top two or three in the nation. Whereas at New Mexico State a team that was, you know, maybe two and two when this happened um, or when their incident happened, they had a player that was presumably involved in like a drug deal gone bad. But he, I, I think that it was later labeled that he was like the targeted, a target of like an ambush robbery type situation. A botch uh, robbery. He if left you will. The, yeah. He, la he left the team hotel at New Mexico. He's from New Mexico state. The team was playing New Mexico left the team hotel to meet up with a girl and somebody else. And someone else showed up. He brought a gun with him. Um, and I believe had to shoot and kill another individual is, is how this went down. Uh, the following day, New Mexico state head coach decided to take his team, drive back to Las Cruces from Albuquerque out of fear of like retaliation and all these things against the will of local police officers. So nobody was interviewed uh, there locally. Uh, fast forward a couple months, and there was an additional hazing incident. So that that team has completely like ended their season. So just yeah, not a bad. <laughs> we had a hazing, and it involved a teammate, and like spanking and possible scrotum tapping. Uh, not good. We've got kidnapping charges. So yeah, they shut down. They shut it down for the season. Um, they were nine fifteen, and this is this coach's first year, by the way. Greg mm -hmm. Hayer here. So well, can we do a, a quick pivot to the NBA just to hit the jaw story and then 
I'll leave you guys with the rest. Is that fair? Yeah, I'd love sure. to. Um, so what's Jaw up to? <laughs> I've wanted I've wanted nothing but people to use like old Ja Rule. It's murder drops anytime talking about like the Murtaugh trial last week. When Ja Morant, a Memphis Grizzlies guard, like deciding to go to a nightclub in Denver, go on Instagram Live, show his gun on Instagram Live in a nightclub. That's just like ten levels of stupidity. At five AM. Um, what well, and didn't this happen just like maybe day or even like the day after the story came out about him beating the shit out of some dude in a pickup basketball game and flashing oh, his what, gun out. It wasn't him. some dude. It was a seventeen-year-old kid. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't yeah. this like within like forty-eight it was, hours? It was all within yeah, at least a week. So this story about him comes out where he <clears throat> he beats the shit out of a seventeen-year-old kid in a pickup basketball game and flashes his gun at him, to like essentially threatening to kill him. Sure. And then like, oh, by the way, here's my gun that you guys have just heard about. And yeah, on Instagram, like, what are you doing, dog? Yeah, and I've I've heard mixed things. I think it, he was at a strip club, right? Is that is that accurate? There was definitely some some action going down it on was the couches a behind club. Him. Yeah, he was shirtless. It was a club. Way. I don't know if it was the club or strip club. Um, you should never go live. You should never go live on Instagram at all. But if you do, it should <laughs> definitely be be before one a.m. And don't do it at a strip club. Don't do it at the cl- and don't do it if there's firearms present. You don't want to implicate yourself in anything. Remember what what Paul Pe- what happened to Paul Pierce with his uh, mm-hmm. his party? I think that was at his house though. But he no had, like, guns strip- involved. Just, no guns just involved. Just booties. Just booties. And he just lost booties his job. Working. He lost his job over it. Which is bullshit. He didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> no, he's just a guy who appreciates he, the female body. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay. what John did much worse. Unfortunately, he works for Disney. Worked. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know that anyone had like an image of Ja Morant that could be confused with like, I don't know. What would be an example here? Um, Jalen Brunson. No, I I don't even know if Jalen Brunson could be like, I think so, but I think maybe the public image of like, uh, LeBron, a David Robinson of like someone that you haven't even like, you can't even imagine them getting in a fight on the court type thing. Right. I facts. don't think Ja is is like the worst Draymond Green off the court, like who is has no issues whatsoever that I'm aware of. Um, Just I'm terrible not to takes. Say that he's you know meta or anything like that. Uh, meta worldwide, that is or world peace, I guess. Um, but the guy stood to earn a lot of money for his work on and off the court. Like his persona was very valuable, and I think he just like catapulted himself into a Gilbert Arenas, Brandon Jennings. Like you're going to earn a lot of money if you continue to play for it, but very few people are paying him for anything else. I like that you brought up Gilbert Arenas, agent, agent zero famously, Mm -hmm. because uh, if you'll remember uh, toward the end of his career, he was suspended, I believe 50 games. Um, If not, maybe the the remainder for bringing a gun on a plane, the team plane. And, this game in Denver, Jaw plays for Memphis. So they had to, in theory, get on a plane and travel to Denver. And the you can deduce, you see where I'm going with this, Dylan? You follow me? <laughs> you can deduce that he brought the gun on the plane. So that's a nice deduction. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Unless he's just got a stash spot, but. Yeah. Um, it Gilbert was behind Arenas, an old fashioned toilet in the bathroom of the Italian <laughs> restaurant in a Ziploc <sighs> bag. I think Gilbert Arenas also brought a gun into a locker room, threatening yes. a yeah. player who was not willing to like pay up a debt on like shooting dice in the locker room. Was it like the other? It was something like that, which is insane. Like you have so much to lose. Why, <coughs> why, why are you doing this? Why? <sighs> I don't it's know. It's so easy not to bring a gun to the club. It's so easy. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of hard. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> it's even easier not to put it on social media. That, that That's the real thing. Like, come like, on. No, the real thing is bringing the, the gun to the club <laughs> in the first place. That's the real you thing. You can't go live. That's stupid. The next part's also stupid, but the first part is the, the dumber of the two. I, I think it's more egregious just to go live in general. You just don't go, don't go live. It's not worth it. You've gone live. Don't I know, and I regret, I regret every time. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, yeah, it, this sucks, man, because I think the everyone's kind of turned on the Grizzlies this year for a number of reasons. Not really, not as much. Jaws had some comments about, oh, I play in the West. I'm not worried. And that looks hilarious now because the West is pretty stacked. Um, but, you know, Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain, there's just been like little mm -hmm. comments made. So, like, they kind of teams go at them. Um, but through that, through all of that, I love watching it because Jaw is so ridiculous. And I don't know how many years of like this level of athleticism you're going to get out of him. So it's kind of like one of those things like, dude, enjoy it while you can because his game is kind of predicated on, um, being the most athletic dude on the court um, and having, you know, mad bunnies, Dylan. Mad it does. So this sucks. And, like, <laughs> there's a chance he's going to get – I mean, through the end of the season, I don't know about the playoffs. Like, I don't I don't know what's going to happen. He did it. He did delete all of his social media, so. Oh, that means he's taking it seriously. Yeah, he's taking a step back. He's mm -hmm. taking the Gary Patterson route. He's in dark mode? Is that what LeBron calls it? Yes. Zero dark 30. <laughs> Zero dark – yeah, LeBron's definitely not there. He's out there drawing Bart and posting that shit on the internet. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers uh, goes into uh, dark mode. Uh, real quick. You get it? A discovery I think that's at the root of all of the Grizzlies' problems. That sucked. Uh, Taylor Jenkins, a.k.a. Taylor Jenkins, uh, their head coach. Didn't know much about him, but what I learned a moment ago, born in Arlington, Texas. Oh, there in lies their problem. St. Mark's alum in Dallas, a private school in Dallas. Which, oh, must uh, be nice. You know, I did not do attend with that Marks. what you will, but I had no idea that he was a DFW fella. St. Mark's also uh, the alma mater of the Wilson brothers, Luke and Owen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and I think Rep Miller, the old 97s. I could be conflating private schools in Dallas. I don't know. I was just a All public right, well, school kid. Anyway, you got to go, KJ. I'll let you fellas. Yeah, I'll let you fellas hit Athletic Greens, and I will be with you Monday. All right, we'll see you. Miss Thank you, you already. Bye bye. I'm gonna miss him. I don't know, man. You don't oh, think shit. you will? Nah. It's kind of vital to the show. Hey, what's our uh, rollback promo? Let's give a shout Ooh, out to our good friends uh, at Roback. Well, it's obviously Backer 20, which is good for 20% off at checkout. It's a one-time use but code. I was going to say a bad news. It's a one-time use code. So if you are going to use it, don't just buy one shirt because you're going to regret not buying two or three or four or maybe even a hoodie or some joggers because you can only use the code one time. And their stuff is gas. We were rocking it yesterday on the course. We all were. It's so good. We were getting a lot of looks. A lot of the members out there were like, dude, what is that? And I'm like, you already know what it is. It's rollback. Every, I, I had to talk myself into not doubling up on rollback because I wore the hat and I almost wore a shirt too. But I, I didn't want to be that guy, like a walking billboard. So I, I didn't go with the shirt, but I, I easily could have. I yeah. probably, I, yeah, that's fine. I've done it before. The pullovers are great. Phenomenal. Backer 20. Backer 20. Load up. It's a one-time use code. Um, what else we got this week? Oh, Players Championship. Mm -hmm. Remember we went to that one time? Uh, yeah, that was an, an absolute blast. As far as trips for content go, it's probably that trip and the Chicago meetup uh, being yeah. the most the most the most fun too in our yeah. time. This was a long time ago. Different podcast, different company actually, but yeah. we did go, and I will say. Uh, that course is very fun to walk. That course is very sick. It's very soupy there, as it is uh, Florida. It is soupy. Uh, that being said, I'd still I would love to play it. It looks phenomenal, and it is a fun, a very fun tournament to watch. Uh, who's your fave this week? We got Rory. Rory is the favorite, and John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler are right behind him. I don't know how much you watched over the weekend of Bay Hill, but you see uh, your boy speed. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't see, but I know what happened. I, I saw Twitter just dragging him for it, and justifiably so. The, the dude's a head case, man. So, like the, the the running joke every time Speed's name, you know, and he start he starts shooting up a leaderboard. It's like, oh, here we go. You know, it's the it's the cocaine hit that is Jordan Speed, the the roller coaster, right? I mean, and and it always it always lives up to the hype. The first we saw this, I guess, was uh, I forgot which year it was, but Sunday at the Masters on number twelve, when twenty sixteen. You put what three in the drink? Was it two or three? It was two. Uh, it, I think 
back. And that seemed to be the first time that he like looked in like human because he was just a machine at that point. Like he was running away with that tournament. And then uh, a couple years later, I think after he he actually did win it, he had that Sunday rally where he like I, I, he was like a, like four or five under on the back, and he was had a chance of shooting like sixty three or sixty two. And remember, he hit he hit his drive and he hit that tree on eighteen, mm-hmm. and he ended up making bogey or par, but he needed a birdie, and like he was right there. Yeah. So yeah, it, it is it's insane. And he I, I did watch him when I saw that he was you know I saw the leaderboard was uh, Rory Spieth uh, and Scotty was up there. I'm like, well, I have to tune in for this. And right when I tune in, he immediately misses like a yeah. five and a half footer. His putter got ice cold. He but bogeys like three in a row, pushes multiple putts. They weren't difficult putts. It it was just it was bizarre. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I like I like roars this week. Yeah, I'm in the I'm right in the middle of um we do a, a my friends and I we do a snake draft for all majors and what the players is uh obviously a big tournament too. So we're we're in the middle of one right now. And looking at the field, I it still pisses me off how watered down this field is because the live golfers aren't there. You know, no Cam Smith, no the returning DJ, the champion, no cap cut. Yeah, the champion. Yeah, Cam Smith, who won it last year, not playing because he is suspended from the PGA Tour. It just sucks for golf, man. I fucking hate it. Anyway, um, yeah, the three guys you mentioned, you can't go wrong with either one of those picks: Scheffler, Rom, Rory. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride with Rom. Me, Rory and Rom. We're a, just a bad tournament. Rom is yep. still top five. It seems like he's just he's always always up there. Yeah, he's a he's an absolute problem. He's a machine. I need to I need to figure out a way for me to like him again because you I stopped I, liking him. I just I don't know what it is, and it's not even Ryder Cup. There's just something about him on the course. It's off putting. I do. I should love him. He's a fellow uh, short backswing king. He sure is. Um, let's party real quick and get out of here. You want to party? I do. All right. This is the part of the pod where we uh, talk about some stories that we haven't talked about while we party. Goat coming back? No. Okay. You see what he said? <laughs> no. Did he officially say that's not happening? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, the, there was a rumor sp- spreading that he was considering coming back. Miami was Miami. the team mentioned along with his name. So he was like, no. no he's, actually, he said, anyone who, what did he say? Anyone who just adopted a, a kitten for their daughter knows that they're not they're not considering playing or like coming back something like that. He's like, no, I'm, I'm like a dad now. I'm, I'm over it. That's cool. He's a dad now. <laughs> yeah, like he's he's committed to like the dad life at this point. Derek Carr, New Orleans. You yeah. like that? You're a Derek Carr guy. I'm, I'm not. I'm no, you're not. Famously, don't like Derek Carr. He's I guess he's fine. He's because he has an inexplicable southern twang and it just doesn't fit it's weird because i don't he's know from california yeah i don't know what it is man but in hard knocks it was just like where is this coming from he tries too hard to be one of the guys and he, he does it doesn't work he's he's phony to me I'm, it might be totally unfair uh and then we'll close out dylan jack you want to talk jackson finally a guy who owns uh some property in your dome did you watch the video I, I couldn't. I watched part of it, and then I was like, this is too uncomfortable. So a restaurant, what is she, a manager? Owner? Manager, owner, restaurateur. Has accused Jackson Mahomes, of course, the uh, less talented younger brother of Patrick Mahomes, of forcibly kissing her. And video, surveillance video has leaked, and he looks to be forcibly kissing her. He grabs her head and kind of brings it right to, right to his and lays one on her. Uh, I don't really know what to make of this. I don't want to add too much conjecture to it, but it's not a good look. I know. No, that. it's bad. It, I mean, like, I, I don't know if there's audio that accompanies it, but like, I mean, she makes her through her body language. She makes her intentions pretty clear. I'll tell you what's unfair: that some people are watching the video and saying, "Oh, she," you can see her like smiling at one point. That doesn't mean anything, people. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. Because that that could be a way of someone trying to like comfort themselves, defense or mechanism, like, or like you know dissolve the situation or something like you don't know yeah. what's behind that smile like don't don't use that as like a defense for him that's bullshit well said. anyway we'll see what happens i don't i don't know it's that guy sucks he sucks 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 and that is the sports party that's let's run it back party. and get on out of here the sports party of i mean sorry run it back of course this segment during which we talk about what we already talked about short one again this week 
KJ blames women for the state of the U.S. economy. I should probably say that while he's uh, listening, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> KJ didn't notice, notice any dickage in the 2023 NFL Combine, but he picked up on some grab shift adjustment. Very important. <laughs> Dave Superman that whole mid pod. I did. Dave, like Don, enjoys both the Old and New Testaments. There's pros and cons to both. Mark Adams looks like a turtle. And finally, <laughs> Chris Beard back to tech picking up steam? Question mark? Uh, the Ole Miss is the rumor. But if we want to, we want to be the source <laughs> that gets that going. And that concludes Run It Back. Fun show. Mm -hmm. that was Fun a good show. One. That We're going to be back. One. We're going to be back next week. We're going to hop into uh, NBA, hopefully some like positive NBA stuff. Um, for the record, people are like, Dave, are you going to talk about Luca and, and Book? Like, what's going on there? Well, they don't like each other. And for the record, I do believe my money's on Luca. If those guys are going to put hands on each other, I think Luca washes him. Is Booker still with uh, Kendall? No. Center? They broke. Was it Kendall? They broke up. Kendall. Too really? much, yeah. It's too bad. Yeah, too bad. But that was a that was a funny a funny way to end that game because mm -hmm. Luca <laughs> Luca is such a psycho. They really did. They mm -hmm. should have just kiss fought, got it over with. <laughs> it's, a, it's an old fashioned kiss fight. All right, let's go kiss fight ourselves. All right, bye. bye. I want my chips with the dip. That's all I know. I don't want my chips playing. I want my chips with the dip. So bring them dips.